Hello everybody and welcome to our 2020 spring seasonal anime reviews. We will be reviewing like 14 shows. We'll be reviewing shows that aired, shows that started to air, and didn't finish. I'm Puppus Fodor. And I'm Dan Tilden. Let's get started. To start off our gauntlet of reviews, I'm going to be talking about Kagushi Goto. Kagushi Goto was a show about Goto Sensei, who is a mangaka, and he drew uh, lewd daujins and stuff. <clears throat> it was called Balls of Fury. And he has a daughter named Hime, and he doesn't want her to find out about his job. It's just a nice slice of life comedy, and it has a lot of fun times, and it's very wholesome. The art style is interesting and very unique, and the little previews of the future at the end of each episode are really what kept me watching the most. The main story isn't anything super special, it's cause it's just like one-offs and you don't get much with each episode for a whole plotline. The ending threw me for a loop, it had a different tone and it was still really good and fit with the story. The backstory and the time jumps were a little, a little confusing sometimes, but it was still really good. I enjoyed a lot of the cynical humor and irony in parts of the last episode, which made it even better. There were a couple cliches and such that they used and still made it really funny, but the main story wasn't super enticing. The last episode, though, made it a lot more worthwhile. That's why my end review of Kagushi Goto is going to be a 6 out of 10. The Eighth Son, Are You Kidding Me? It's basically a show about this guy who wakes up one day as the eighth son of a royal family. He doesn't have much going for him, being how low he is in that family, but he later learns that he has incredible magic potential. Overall, the show was alright. It wasn't my favorite, but it had some good points. The fights in it were all kind of boring to watch because of how overpowered the main character is, and the animations for the fights were also kind of boring. They could have been better. The characters, though, I liked all of them. They all had a good character design and they worked well together. The main story of the show all flowed nicely and the ending was very fulfilling. I was content with how it ended and I thought it was nice. Overall I would probably rate it a 6 out of 10. Josh and Chan Dropkick Season 2. For some reason this show aired all of its episodes in one day and Season 1 you can only get on Amazon Prime so it, it's, it's interesting. Luckily, you don't really need to watch season one to watch season two. You'll be a little confused at first, but the characters are easy to understand and it's not hard to get into the show from just season two if you don't have Amazon Prime. Basically, it's about a gothic Lolita that summons a demon in season one and then the demon is like, wait, how do I get back? Because she doesn't have the part two to the grimoire to send her back. So Josh and Chan is stuck there and you meet her other demon friends and that's the summary of season one. And season two just continues that. There's really no continuing storyline. It's just a lot of fun one-off episodes that are, they're just really fun and they have a nice sense of humor because it's a slice of life comedy. The only ongoing thing is Pekula's life as she's homeless. Justice for Pekula. The characters are all likable and fun. Well, I, I take that back. Most of the characters are all likable and fun. Except Josh and Chan. She's, she's really awful, but whatever. The show has an interesting but nice blend of lighthearted and gory humor. There's a lot of Josh and Chan getting brutally cut in half. But there's also Yurine, and you, you can never go wrong with gothic lolitas. Sometimes I did feel as though the story was lacking, but that was part of its charm as just being something to watch whenever you feel like it. Overall, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. My Next Life as a Villainous, All Routes Lead to Doom. A show about a girl who gets isekai'd into one of her favorite dating sims, Fortune Lover. Overall, it's a phenomenal show. I absolutely loved it. All the characters are great, and it had such a varying cast of them that there's at least one character for all types of viewers to enjoy. The comedy was also on point. It didn't have a whole lot of comedy, but I was smiling basically the entire time I watched it just from the characters and how they all interacted. I would probably rate this a 10 out of 10, because I don't really have any complaints about it. Honestly, I just want more, and I can't wait for season 2 to air. Seen yesterday for me. This show is about 
Uzomi who likes a girl, but the girl doesn't like him, and then he finds another girl that likes him, but he doesn't like her back, and then there's this other guy that likes the girl he likes, and it's a really confusing love web, but it is amazing. The show is a romance drama, but does both parts really well in my opinion. When I saw the first couple of episodes, my hopes were really high for the entire show to keep the pace that it started at, and it really did keep that pace for a while. Some could say it slowed down a little bit in the middle, but that's it was still really enticing and kept me watching. The characters are super interesting, especially Haru, because she has a crow. Who, who doesn't like a girl that just has a crow? I was planning on giving the show like an 8 or a 9, but the last episode was too amazing. The first half of it kind of continued with the slow trend of like episodes 7 through 11, but after that it got a little confusing at what was happening. I kind of knew what was going on, but it was, it was a little weird, and then it did an amazing 360, and the show ended on point perfectly. I could have never, I couldn't have dreamed of a better ending. Was it also a no-scope? Yes, it was a it was a 360 no-scope, perfect ending, 10 out of 10. I loved this show. Okay. There, I, I have one complaint. I think in like episode 7, Uzomi is in like a diner and he just like starts crunching on ice. It was, it was, it really hurt me to watch that. But that's my only complaint. Princess Connect Redive. A show about Yuki. He had a party of all girls and he basically has simp powers. Whenever a girl's in trouble, he just buffs everybody's stats, I think. They never actually explain it. He just has simp powers. I think he's called like the Princess Knight. I don't remember. And honestly, I wasn't impressed with the show at all. I was expecting more fighting, but there was really little of that, but it seemed like it wanted to focus on it more. And the pacing and tone was constantly fluctuating from like super light to, to slightly dark even and it just didn't do it correctly. Most of the time I thought it was really slow and nothing important was happening at all for the story. There were a couple parts that picked up and actually had something to do with the story and I did enjoy those. I feel like it could have been something amazing if they made it more story driven, but they also were adding in tons of characters that you just couldn't keep up with. They kept adding them in and they kept making you think that they were going to have an important role and then they just never showed up again. This show is more slice of life than it is really action because they they start a guild and it's their uh, food guild because they want to eat good food as bros I guess and that's what they do instead of defeating evil people. The one thing I do like the most about this show is the character designs. I loved the character designs. They all looked really nice and original and it was really visually appealing, but everything else about the show was just so bad. I didn't want to watch it, but I decided I had to finish it. In the end, I'll give this show a 4 out of 10. Gleepnir, a odd show where a guy can turn into a fursuit and Claire can get inside of him and they fight while Pretty they're much. trying to get coins for a vending machine. Aliens and vending machines? I mean, it's, it's weird, okay? It is definitely a strange show. I really did enjoy a lot of aspects of the show, though. It had a few good action scenes that were really well animated, and the fighting and all of the battles were pretty creative with how they presented the characters and their special abilities. I feel like the mysterious backstory and giving little bits but not too much was a really good touch, and it just helps me want more about how it all started. I really do hope we get a season two because I'm super curious of how the story will proceed yeah, I agree with everything you said. It was a very interesting show, and at first it was a little confusing, but how it was intriguing and how it laid it all out kept me watching. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to see more and why I still want more. It slowly explained the confusing parts, kind of like gradually put those in there, and it did a really good job at doing that and explaining them in a way to where I could understand it. Overall, I would probably give it an 8 out of 10. Maybe if, they, if we get a season 2, it will be even better, and I hope it is. Tower of God, a show about Bam and his story of climbing this tower so that he can get to the top and see the stars with Rahel. Since she climbed before him, he's really just chasing after her. 
Bam is a big simp. But along the way, he makes a lot of good friends and they start to care for each other even though the tower is supposed to be a very competitive environment. The show was really good. I haven't read the webtoon, but I don't know if it did justice to it, but I enjoy the show as a standalone itself. I constantly was finding myself impatient for the next episode and was on the verge of just reading it the entire time. I really enjoyed the art styles and the character designs, especially Hedon. His He just looks so cool. The show never seemed to slow down and it didn't ever seem to skip things either. It seemed to just keep a really good pace and the progression was spot on. I really like how it goes from being a free-for-all to a team aesthetic with the characters actually caring about each other. And I'm interested to learn more about all the characters' backstories like Kun and Rock. Especially Rock because we know virtually nothing about him. I'm also curious about Rahel's backstory because it never really fully explains what's going on with her either. There's a lot of things that just are intriguing about why these characters are there and what is going on in this universe. The mystery behind each character and the reasons they want to climb the tower just make this show so interesting and really good. In the end, I'd have to give it a 9 out of 10. Really, so there's room to grow for season 2 if there is one, because I really hope there is. It wasn't quite a perfect show either, but I did enjoy it a lot. Kaguya Sama Love is War, a show about the student council president and his vice president and how they're in love with each other, but their pride is too much to allow them to admit it. This show was full of great interactions between characters, and it really expanded upon their interactions in season one. I read the manga beforehand, so I already knew everything that was going to happen, but I think it followed the manga really well and did a really good job of animating it, especially the Ishigami arc. That's such a good arc. The Ishigami arc was absolutely wonderful, especially since Ishigami is one of my favorite characters. I really hope there's a season 3 and soon. I can't wait. I want to see more of this animated. Every episode also does make it feel like we're getting closer to a confession, and I hope that we get to see one here pretty soon. I really just can't give it anything less than a 10 out of 10 because I just love this series so much. It is a very good series and I really enjoyed it, but I would only give it a 9 out of 10. Now, it's time for the special reviews of shows that didn't fully air. So we're just going to talk about shows that started to air but didn't get to finish because uh... Bing, that stopped stuff. A Paranman, a show about like 19th century, 20th century, somewhere around there, old timey Senku. This this guy just he wants to he wants to build stuff, you know. He likes to experiment, and he ends up going to America, and he's just gonna compete in a nationwide race from East Coast to West Coast, basically steel ball run, but without stands and, or horses, because they're on vehicles. But it's it seems really interesting, and they only got to episode three, I think, and. I didn't like the first episode, in my opinion. It wasn't very good. The second episode made it a little better, but the third episode, I actually was getting excited for it. It was picking up pace and it was starting to get really good, and I am ready for it to start airing again. I will definitely continue watching it. Digimon 2020. This show, I was really looking forward to it because I've watched the Digimon Adventure Tri movies and I watched the regular Digimon Adventure and it's just been a major part of my childhood so I was really looking forward to this and then it got cancelled after like episode 3. I was kind of disappointed but those three episodes were good. Basically it's like it's Digimon but in a an alternate timeline I guess and they, they were slowly introducing the characters instead of just having them all thrown in together like the original adventure but in episode 2 or 3 it threw a major curveball, which I would have never expected. Overall, I am really looking forward to getting to continue it and seeing how the rest of it plays out. Million Dollar Detective. This show was super interesting to me because it was about a rich guy wanting to be a detective, and it seems like an American movie, but they just made it an anime. And it, it was really good, all two or three episodes, however many that did air, they were really good. I found them to be amazing, and I was ready for the next one, and then it just stopped. But I, I did really enjoy it, I liked the whole rich guy not caring about anything, and super justice heavy sidekick who also doesn't want to be the sidekick but the main character. It's a nice change of pace for shows that I've been watching seasonally, and it isn't an isekai. We'll be watching when it 
releases partway through the summer seasonals. Food Wars The Fifth Plate. The fifth season in a cooking anime. Basically, this kid goes to a cooking school, and uh, he is just really good at cooking. The first two episodes were really good, and it stuck with the vibe of the rest of the show. And overall, I'm looking forward to it continuing. Hopefully, season five is as good as some of the others, and hopefully we get to learn more about what I am assuming is the next antagonist, because it, it makes him out to be like that, but we don't really know, because he also has a job at the school. But he kind of looks like Kirito. He wields two kitchen knives, so he does dual wield, and using swords when cooking isn't out of the ordinary thing for Food Wars. It's been done before. That is our spring 2020 seasonal anime reviews. All of them that we watched. Some of them we just didn't watch. But we will watch. Maybe. Tune in next three months for our summer 2020 seasonal anime reviews where we are already watching or a lot a lot yeah all right like and subscribe thank you please do it so you can hear us ramble more about anime yeah it'll be fun we have fun at least What the that heck? That wasp. That wasp is zooming. <laughs> okay, back to the anime. Stay cool, Kirito. From Food Wars, Shokugeki no Soma, the fifth plate. Why'd you have to make <laughs> such a sad reference? I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, okay.